thank you all. Would like to also special thanks to the League of Women Voters for their help in coordinating today's event. My name is Dwayne Bensing. I'm staff attorney with the ACLU of Delaware. I'll be uh, coordinating or facilitating today's training. Please, if you have any questions, happy to uh, answer those either in the chat or uh, just uh, cut in, but I'll do my best if I miss something. I know you all aren't shy as you've already demonstrated, so we'll get going. Um, the agenda today, we're gonna talk about what is the Delaware Voting Rights Coalition. It may be a new organization to you, so I'll introduce what we who we are. We're gonna talk about HB 75, the constitutional amendment on absentee voting. We will talk about vote by mail and same day registration. Uh, though just briefly, today's focus and our legislative focus right now as a coalition is the passage of HB 75. Uh, we'll talk about what constituent meetings look like. We'll give you a, an overview of how to make those meetings with your elected official as productive as possible. Uh, and then we'll prepare for Wednesday's meeting with some of our elected officials. So we'll start talking about uh, your personal stories and what you plan to share uh, in those meetings on Wednesday. Okay, so first the Delaware Voting Rights Coalition. The Delaware Voting Rights Coalition is Delaware's first statewide coalition of voting rights organizations and advocates. We encourage voters and policymakers to consider reforms that will impact voting rights. Our focus is empowering communities, especially communities of color, people who speak English as a second language, people involved in the justice system and young folks to identify and remedy barriers to the ballot box. Uh, we work with legislators, local election officials, and the Department of Elections to make these reform recommendations a reality. Today's purpose, we're going to equip you with the knowledge and skills to advocate for voting rights while speaking with legislators later this week. I like this slide, it just shows the scope of our coalition. Uh, as you might've heard Cheryl mention earlier, our website is housed under the ACLU of Delaware's website, but we are not an ACLU of Delaware uh, additional cohort. We are a coalition of many organizations uh, and indeed many organizations have been full partners in our work, uh, in our advocacy uh, leading up to our advocacy day this coming Wednesday. So these are the logos of many of our coalition members, but we also uh, invite folks to participate in their individual capacity. So if you care deeply about voting rights and want to get involved, our Zoom meetings are always open to you. Okay, HB 75. I know a lot of you know a whole lot about HB 75. I see Nick is here and he has a great op-ed. I encourage you all to read that op-ed uh, that tells you a little bit more about HB 75. We'll give you an overview about what this constitutional amendment is. HB 75 would permit no excuse absentee voting. It allows for changes to the current laws governing, governing absentee voting. It's the second leg of a constitutional amendment that would eliminate from the constitution certain limitations as to who is eligible to vote by absentee ballot. It provides that the General Assembly shall enact general laws providing uh, for the procedures for absentee voting, and it paves the way for no excuse absentee voting. I have the text of HB 75 there for you. The General Assembly shall enact general laws providing the circumstances, rules, and procedures by which registered voters may vote by absentee ballot. Uh, as a, an aside or an important uh, note perhaps is that this language tracks the General Assembly's power over elections generally. Article 5, Section 1 of the Delaware Constitution gives the General Assembly its broad powers to dictate the methods and means of elections. Uh, our Constitution is unique in that it has this Article 5, Section 4A that only identifies certain subcategories of voters who are eligible to cast an absentee ballot. Uh, we have those six uh, subcategories of folks who are eligible here. So folks in public service in the military, uh, out uh, of their district for work because of illness or physical disability, uh, vacation counts, religion counts, um, and if they are uh, a spouse or dependent residing, um, outside of the US for military service. 
Importantly, you'll notice that public health restrictions or fears are not included as one of the qualifying reasons for not appearing on election day. So that's why we needed emergency legislation in 2020 when we were under the pandemic. Uh, we needed to have another alternative um, because absentee voting wasn't actually uh, an option available to us without additional legislation. Emergency legislation was passed in 2020 and that's why uh, over 160,000 Delawareans voted by absentee ballot in 2020. So Delaware needs no excuse absentee voting. With no excuse absentee voting, uh, it allows anyone to request an absentee ballot uh, without an excuse needed. If you wanna just review your ballot in the pleasure of and comfort of your home, great. If you are unsure of whether you're going to have childcare uh, on election day, great. If you think your work schedule might change at the last minute and unexpected, great. Any of these excuses or no excuse at all would be fine for no excuse absentee voting. As I mentioned before, our constitution is one of the most restrictive in the nation. Uh, making you have an excuse is only one of those six excuses that counts. 34 other states have absent, uh, no excuse absentee voting or universal vote by mail programs. Um, and Delaware, along with 13 Southern states, only allows absentee voting for a specific reason. Cheryl. Um, is it in the Constitution, like it is in ours in any state, the specific reasons? It is in the Constitution in some of those states. I know that um, Pennsylvania has um, language on uh, who's eligible for absentee voting. Uh, interesting, we can get into the history of, of how this all came about. There's an early 1943, I believe, um, Supreme Court decision finding that the um, Soldiers' Vote Act was unconstitutional. The Soldiers' Vote Act allowed uh, military personnel in encampments out of state to vote. The Delaware Supreme Court said that that was unconstitutional. In direct response, the General Assembly amended our constitution to permit absentee voting for those military service personnel. Throughout the years, uh, our section 4A permitting absentee voting has included additional subcategories of voters who may be eligible to cast an absentee ballot. Um, so this is just the final, uh, final point on on expanding the right of folks uh to to uh, to vote with an absentee ballot but yes cheryl other other states but very few do uh as we can see you know 34 states have no excuse absentee voting or a universal vote by mail program so we're very rare of having this constitutional language uh We've had it, as I said, since 1943. That was in direct response to the Supreme Court saying uh, you can't have absentee voting. Our General Assembly acted swiftly and said, oh, yes, we can. And for 80 years, folks have been voting absentee, for nearly 80 years, uh, folks have been voting by, with absentee ballots in Delaware and ensuring that those votes are counted and are safe and secure. Our right to vote outside of the confines of a polling station shouldn't be limited to, oh, didn't mean to move yet, uh, to certain uh, limitations. People may want to vote absentee to take the time to study the issues or candidates on their ballot. This could decrease the number of people that show up on election day, so decrease the time that folks have to spend at their polls. Um, and it helps them plan for any unexpected threat that emerges, including, uh, but not limited to the resurgence of, uh, of a variant to our ongoing pandemic. We see that this might lead on into election season now in 2022, two years later. Why we need your representative to vote yes on HB 75. In 2019, HB 73 was the first leg of this constitutional amendment passed with overwhelming bipartisan support. There were actually only three representatives in our house that voted against the first leg of HB 73, uh, that voted against HB 73, which is the first leg. Um, and in 2021, HB 75 was put up for a vote and it was two votes short of passing, but could have passed if it had that continued bipartisan support. Unfortunately, in 2021, all of the bipartisan support that we saw just two years before had uh, 
then evaporated. During the 2020 election, emergency legislation permitted all voters to use absentee ballots due to COVID and voter turnout increased by 7%, with one third of votes being cast by absentee um, or mail-in votes. I have this chart here. We have meetings with Representative Hensley, Ramon, Shoup, and Smith. Each of these elected officials actually received a large number of absentee votes in 2020. So uh, 1,942 folks voted for Representative Hensley with an absentee ballot in 2020, and the list goes on. So you might wanna take note of that uh, leading up to your meeting with your elected official, that you're talking on behalf of not only all absentee voters, but folks who voted for them with an absentee ballot. Indeed, this impacts a large number of their very constituents. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Aside from just the numbers, percentage-wise, has it been calculated what percentage of their voters did absentee voting? Because uh, the numbers, that, it could that could represent like one percent, which they wouldn't care about. But if it's fifty percent or a hundred percent, sure. I think for Ramon, it's about sixteen percent because he got six thousand votes or one sixth. <clears throat> Thank you, Donald. I was gonna say that information is available on the Department of Elections website and you can calculate the percentage. Um, these, these raw numbers and thank Donald, that, that, that data point I think is instructive. I think uh, that's a, a, a reasonable number of Actually, votes that folks uh, receive. Right. Each uh, representative district is about 30,000 voters, I believe, um, somewhere between 20 and 30. And so these, these, are, these represent high numbers of folks, though that's how many people in the district, not voters within the district. Um, and so you can look at that. I will say that Representative Smith actually received more absentee voters than his Democratic opponent in the 2020 election. So that is another uh, note. That's a very handy fact to have at the ready during your meeting. I wanna talk briefly about vote by mail and same day voter registration uh, because these are other two legislative priorities of the coalition and we will be working on these issues this legislative session. So if you have an opportunity to discuss these or if they come up in your meetings with representatives, I want you to be prepared. Um, again, I think the thrust of these conversa conversations on Wednesday will be HB 75 and I encourage you to focus on that issue. Um, but if these issues come up, I want you to be prepared. So vote by mail uh, is where registered voters may request a mail ballot before election day um, that may be returned either by mail or at a designated drop-off location. Many folks are familiar with vote by mail process because that's what was used through emergency legislation in 2020. Vote by mail uh, is has a strong impact in Delaware, as we saw in 2020, more than 160,000 Delawareans voted by mail in 2020. If you compare that to 2016, the last presidential election, only 25,000 folks voted uh, by mail in, in that election or with absentee ballot in that election. So, you know, a lot of the folks of those 160,000 who were eligible to vote by mail through emergency legislation, importantly, will not be eligible to cast their ballot the exact same way they did in 2020 this year unless the General Assembly acts this session. Very important that the General Assembly do something for this 160,000 Delawareans who otherwise will be very confused when they get to election day and they're wondering, where's my ballot? It hasn't come in the mail. And then they find out, oh, I'm not eligible to vote by mail. And it might be too late for them uh, to otherwise engage and exercise their right to vote. Again, how we compare with other states, 34 other states have permanent universal vote by mail eligibility. There might be some confusion. A lot of times we say the word absentee and vote by mail and we use them interchangeably. Uh, importantly, vote by mail is a method of voting that Delawareans could choose to use. It doesn't uh, require them to be absent. Um, it's just another method like early voting would be. So whether you're absent or for a constitutionally authorized reason or no reason at all, um, it's just a different way of casting your ballots. Rather than showing up on election day, <laughs> you do it from the comfort of your home. Again, it's an additional method that Delawareans could use. Some states, and this, this can sometimes be confusing, some states like Colorado, I think is the most in, uh, famous, uh, do universal uh, 
vote by mail in that the only method uh, primarily used there, and I, I will say that's with an asterisk because they even have the opportunity to vote in person, but the primary method that all voters use to exercise their vote is through mail. Um, that is not at this point what the coalition is putting for, pushing forward for. What we're asking for is that this be an opportunity for Delawareans to choose uh, that they that we still permit people to vote in person on election day and early vote or early vote, um, but in addition that they have this opportunity to vote by mail instead of voting in person. Same day registration um, is a is a way that folks can get registered to vote on any day, including up to election day. So it allows a person to both register and cast their ballot at the same time, one stop shop. It's so important because same day the, re the arbitrary registration deadline actually uh, disenfranchises quite a few folks. If you've moved uh, since the last time an election was uh, election was held or the last time you were registered and you forget to re-register in your new location, if you show up on election day, that's too late. Our registration deadline is uh, four weeks ahead of time from the election time. So this is an arbitrary additional deadline for folks to have. And actually ours uh, in Delaware is one of the um, most, uh, the longest time period ahead of an election. A lot of times people aren't even thinking about election day until right up, uh, you know, right before the election happens. By that time in Delaware, often it's too late to even register in their new location. Uh, estimates say that an additional 22,000 Delawareans could be eligible to vote if we implemented same day registration. Um, this is common and many other states have same day registration for the 2022 elections, 21 states plus the District of Columbia will offer same day registration, allowing any eligible resident uh, of the state to register to vote and cast their ballot at the same time. There is pending le uh, legislation sponsored by Representative Sherry Dorsey Walker that provides for uh, the registration period to include uh, up through election day for those elections. Right now, the deadline is the fourth Saturday prior to the date of the election. So this just allows people to register and vote all at the same time using the exact same forms of identification you would use to register four weeks early. Excuse me, what is the argument against doing that? What? Why are they resisting that? Is there an argument for it? Um, you know, I don't think I'm the best person to articulate <laughs> what their argument might be against it. Um, because I, I, I actually don't want to give any credence to some of the uh, suggestions of voter fraud that we have no record of. And so I think the, um, you know, I, I think that that's kind of the slippery slope you get down is, is this idea or suggestion that people are abusing the system and perhaps would register multiple times. You know, I could just go from my election district to my neighboring election district. To be clear, that could not happen. Our current database of election officials actually tracks whether each voter, eligible voter, has cast their ballot. And so an additional ballot would not be counted. Um, our elections are secure and, and permit uh, that kind of security. So I, I don't have a good answer for why that arbitrary deadline is set. Um, there have been constitutional cases dealing with this issue and states are constitutionally permitted to have a deadline uh, for a person to show that they're at a citizen or resident residency requirement for voting that has been upheld as a legitimate state interest that you don't want someone who's not a member of your community to be participating in the democratic process. Um, but there's no reason to believe that a person who has recently moved to Delaware uh, and intends to stay here and who wants to exercise their right to vote should be not permitted to do so because they haven't been here for since the fourth Saturday before the election. When I moved to Delaware five years ago, um, they offered me registration at the time that I got my license. So um, I can't imagine anybody not wanting to do that. 
It's the same yeah. one step. You get your license and you get registered at the same time. Exactly, exactly. And for a lot of folks, uh, as you may know, automatic voter registration passed last session. It's not yet been implemented, but it's related to this idea that you do do it all when you go to, to any state services um, agency. Primarily, this is the, the DMV situation. People just like you who show up to get their new driver's license can often... Um, and the automatic voter registration automatically registers folks who sign up uh, for a, a driver's license, for example. And so those folks would be registered and eligible to vote. So that picks up a lot of folks. Uh, but we have a lot of people in Delaware who actually don't have a state ID or don't have a driver's license. They may rely on public transportation in inner city Wilmington, for example. And so those folks uh, won't necessarily be picked up by automatic voter registration if they don't uh, show up at a state agency, you know, for other services, they may not be picked up. And so that's why same day registration is an important additional registration method for people who may not be registered otherwise. And automatic voter registration, if you showed up, if you happen to move to Delaware, you know, three weeks before the election, even if you got registered at the DMV, you would still not be eligible for that upcoming election that happened yeah. in three weeks. Yeah. Got it. Okay, constituent meetings 101. I know many of you who already know your representative, know them well, I'm sure. Uh, we're just gonna kind of talk about what are the best ways, best practices when you're in those meetings, uh, especially in the virtual world. These are gonna be meetings held over Zoom. Um, and so what does that look like? What do these meetings look like? So we're gonna give you some pro tips um, and, uh, and get you armed and ready for these meetings. So I've already provided a lot of information for you about whether your elected official generally supports or oppose these issues. Each of our meetings with our targeted representatives, these are folks uh, that we've identified as potential swing voters. I will note for those of you meeting with Representative Shoup, he did write an op-ed last week saying that he will vote no on HB 75. However, I really encourage you to engage with him this Wednesday to talk more about this issue. Uh, importantly, he did vote for HB 73 last time around. And so I think an opportunity to have him explain why his vote has changed is important and asking him how he uh, anticipates to protect those folks who voted absentee in 2020. How are they going to participate in 2022 without his support on HB 75? Um, so the voting record on here, all four of the folks that you're meeting with on Wednesday voted for this exact same language in 2019. Um, all of them uh, did not vote for it in 2021. Uh, two of them went not voting. That was Smith and Shoup. And two of them voted no, completely changed their vote from yes to no. And that was Ramon and Hensley, both changing their vote from yes to no. Um, the next thing you want to know is, is your elected official a co-sponsor? No, none of our elected officials are co-sponsors of any of this legislation, um, though they are sponsors of other legislation. Importantly, Representative Shoup has talked about a bill that would um, streamline registration for municipal elections. Importantly, the coalition uh, generally supports that legislation and is going to work with Representative Shoup on streamlining that registration process. Um, Don, sorry, I just muted you because I was getting some background, background there. Other background information useful for crafting your messages. I'm happy to talk with you all uh, in figuring out what, that, what might be helpful. Um, each of these uh, folks we're meeting with on Wednesday are Republicans, uh, Republican uh, legislators. Um, and we are trying to figure out where they stand on voting rights issues. We have reason to hope that they may, uh, uh, may agree with us that folks should be eligible to vote uh, with no excuse absentee. And so we're hoping to win them over. Um, you all know their districts very well. And I encourage you to uh, incorporate um, any information you have about why absentee voting is important for folks that they serve. Um, and all of our legislators are up for re-election in this coming uh, election year in 2022. And then on that final piece, another piece of legislation, I talked about HB uh, 146, 
uh, that Representative Shoup. I'm not aware of any other election related legislation that any of these uh, legislators are working on. Um, if I become aware, I'm, I'm happy to discuss those. We'll be talking about that ask, uh, the ask piece. That's so important when you're meeting with a representative that you have an ask. For Shoup, Cheryl? don't we know that he's um, pretending that he's going to propose a constitutional amendment to allow for anyone to vote by absentee? That is his claim. Um, I have not seen uh, that draft legislation. I asked him for that draft legislation about a year ago. Uh, still haven't seen it. And so I was curious to see that he referenced it again in his op-ed last week. Uh, and so I hope that folks that are meeting with him on Wednesday will ask him to share a draft of that legislation. Importantly, any constitutional amendment introduced this year would not be effective, would not be implemented this year because any constitutional amendment requires two consecutive sessions of the General Assembly to approve by two thirds vote. Um, so importantly, any constitutional amendment introduced this year will not impact how folks can vote in 2022. It would, the soonest it would be, uh, have an impact would be 2024. Um, you're gonna be meeting with your elected official in, with the, the Delaware Voting Rights Coalition. Uh, it's, it'd be great to have a constituent in each of our meetings uh, able to take notes. We'll have two folks from the coalition uh, join the constituents on this. So I'll start off uh, we'll talk about that agenda later, about what that looks like. We'll have roles set up going into the meeting. That's important. We talked about the message, talked about some resources we have for you. I have one pager talking points that we'll share following today's training. Uh, and then the ultimate ask, of course, is asking them to support HB 75 and vote yes. It's a good idea to practice what you want to say and how you will deal uh, with difficult questions before it takes place. So I'm really glad that folks have been asking great questions here today. Um, I really want everybody to start thinking about why absentee, no excuse absentee voting is important to you or your family leading up to those meetings on Wednesday. That's gonna be what makes the most impact. During the meeting, it's uh, great to, to leave a great impression, right? First impressions matter. So dress nicely, be on time, don't over speak the representative. If you're virtual, stay on camera. It's horrible when you're on a meeting with people and they're, all their cameras are off. You kind of feel like you're talking into the void. So you wanna make sure they know you're there, you're listening, you're gonna be holding them accountable, you're taking notes. If they say they're gonna vote for HB 75, you're gonna expect that they will vote for HB 75. Um, so just be present. If you represent an organization, uh, we'll introduce ourselves as the coalition at the beginning of each of these meetings. Um, we'll talk about what our mission of our organization is and where and which organizations are a part of the Voting Rights Coalition. We have over 100 members uh, who participate in our meetings. Um, so we are a, a vast coalition um, throughout the state of Delaware. Um, when you introduce yourself, it's really important that you introduce yourself as a constituent. Obviously, if you are, don't please don't misrepresent if you're not a constituent of any of these folks. It's important. We've worked hard to identify constituents that are willing to with their representative. Um, so if you have any personal ties to that district, that's going to make the most impact. They really care about hearing from their voters, the folks that are in their district who are going to talk to their neighbors and talk to their family and talk to their folks at their church and their schools and their workplace and say, listen, you know, this representative is either for voting rights or against voting rights. You can start with a supportive statement if the legislator voted in favor before, you should thank them all for supporting HB 73 in 2019. That was really important that we passed the first leg of this constitutional amendment and we couldn't have done it without their support. And we should thank them for taking the time. It's great that they have committed the time to meet with our constituents. Uh, hopefully uh, they'll all show up. Uh, and if they don't, we'll be sure to share that with folks um, to make sure that folks know that they've left us stranded, but hopefully they'll all show up but we should thank them for their time. We're keeping the meeting pretty focused on voting rights uh, and specifically HB 75. So we're gonna state clearly and concisely about the issue we wanna discuss, our position in favor of HB 75 um, and the position we want them to take, voting yes. 
We're gonna use simple, understandable terms, avoid acronyms, um, supporting facts about why they should take your position. I think I've given you a lot of those already. Uh, stress how, how the issue will affect the member's district or the state. Share a personal story, concrete examples. Why did you vote absentee? Why is it important to you to be able to vote absentee in 2022? What is your experience? Uh, you can mention other organizations, uh, influential people, government officials, and lawmakers who have similar uh, position on this issue. In fact, Representative Shoup, uh, for example, has gone on the record saying that he does support no excuse absentee voting. While he may want that language specifically in the Constitution, uh, the end goal here is the same. We all want no excuse absentee voting. Be a good listener. After you make your pitch, allow the legislator to respond. It's going to be really interesting. We've heard a lot of through the grapevine what these folks believe and whether they're going to be supportive or not supportive. This is one of the first times that we're going to have these representatives talk directly with their constituents. And so it's a really wonderful opportunity for us to really figure out where these folks stand and if there's any wiggle room for us to get them to vote for HB 75 at all. Uh, you know, politicians going to politic, and so be prepared to bring the conversation back to our message if they start talking about, you know, jobs or start talking about critical race theory or something else. You know, let's bring it back. Say, thank you, Representative, but we're here to talk about voting rights in the 2022 election and HB 75. Uh, so be focused on that issue. Don't get distracted. Answer questions to the best of your ability. But if it's totally fine to say, I don't know. Um, and then we can follow up, right? If you get a, a, a get stumped on a question, that's what the coalition's here. I'm happy to help us figure out what those answers may be. So it's okay to say we don't know. Um, don't forget to make your ask. It's going to be a waste of time if we have these 30 minutes with our elected officials and then they end the meeting saying, well, I have no idea what that was about, right? We want to make sure that they know that each of you want them to vote yes on HB 75. It's a yes or no question. Will you vote yes on HB 75? Can we count on you to vote yes on HB 75? They're saying no, uh, have a plan, right? Why? Why did you support it in 2019, but not now? How do you expect your voters to exercise the vote in 2022 if the pandemic continues to rage on? We're gonna leave behind a fact sheet uh, outlining our position. We have an HB 75 talking point you can share um, with your representative. And again, always thank them for their time at the end of the meeting. We want these meetings to go well, right? You get uh, you get more bees with honey than vinegar, so be sweet. That's after hard. the meeting, say again. I said that's hard. <laughs> it is. It is for sure. But we can do it. We'll do it together. We've got each other's backs, and we're we'll we'll, we'll support each other when it's over. Uh, after the meeting, you'll write down what happened, any information you learned about the member's position so you can share it with others and use it to develop your legislative advocacy strategy. Always follow up with a timely thank you in the letter. Reiterate the ask. Please vote yes on HB 75. I hope that we've persuaded you. Um, we will be issuing a press release after our meetings on Wednesday. Uh, letting the media know how, the, how these have gone, sharing any commitments that we've been able to get from representatives. It's really important that we take good notes. Uh, we'll also have opportunities for constituents to reach out to the media. Your voice is so important. It's, it, that's the piece of this that I think has been left out uh, in our past advocacy on HB 75, the voice of voters who desperately need absentee voting and no excuse absentee voting. So, you know, if, if a representative says something that doesn't sit well with you, your response to that is valid. And so share your own thoughts about how it went. If you thought that they were being disingenuous perhaps, or maybe they you know, didn't answer your question directly, share those thoughts and we can put those uh, in our press release following up on the meeting. We really wanna elevate other voices in this conversation. It's so important that you've been listened to and that you feel like your representative is representing your best interests. All right, this is the more uh, interactive piece of this uh, is sharing your story. That kind of relates to exactly what I was just talking about. These meetings are great opportunities to introduce yourself or reintroduce yourself to your legislator uh, and share with them why HB 75 and voting rights are important to you. So there you go. Why is HB 75 important to you? 
Did you vote by an absentee ballot in 2020? Did you vote for your representative in 2020? It would be really great for one of you if you said, you know, Representative Shoup, I voted for you with an absentee ballot in 2020, and I'd love to be able to do it again in 2022. Please provide a mechanism for me to do that, right? That is powerful. I'm not sure any of you did. I'm not sure any of you can say that. But if any of you can, that would be really, that would be really great. How are your friends and family impacted, right? Maybe your neighbor voted absentee and, and you know that your neighbor supports the, the representative. You know, that's totally fine to talk about. Personal stories uh, that directly relate to the constituents of your representative are gonna be most powerful. As I said, Nick has a great op-ed in the newspaper today. I encourage you all to read it. That is such a strong personal narrative. These, meeting, these introductions, uh, these meetings are gonna be brief, only 30 minutes committed. Um, and so we need to, to make sure that we give everybody an opportunity to introduce themselves. So keep your story short, right? 30 seconds to a minute. We don't wanna go on and on. We've gotta share the time, share the microphone with everybody else. Uh, qual quality is important, so is quantity. We wanna get as many faces and voices in front of these representatives as possible. And now the ask. I think I think you all know. Can someone tell me what's the ask? Maybe you're on mute. What's the ask? So yes, HB seventy five. Thank you, Sally. That was just <laughs> you got it, one hundred percent. Will you vote yes on HB seventy five? No. All right. What do you do then? Why has your vote changed since twenty nineteen? How will you ensure that folks voted by absentee ballot in 2020 will be able to do so this year? These are important questions, but the ask is vote yes on HB 75. Be ready if they say no. Be ready if they say I'm not there yet. Be ready if they say, who knows what they're gonna say, right? But be ready. And if you have time, let's talk about some of our other uh, legislation, right? Will you support implementing legislation similar to the emergency legislation in 2020? that provides for no excuse absentee voting to make that permanent in Delaware, right? The legislature could act under its emergency provision. The court upheld the General Assembly's emergency powers. Um, the court very well could uh, uphold other powers of the legislature to implement vote by mail. Will you vote yes on HB 25, permitting same day registration? I think that's a great opportunity to ask the question that was asked earlier. What's, what is the argument against HB 25? Expl explain that to me. Any other questions you all, these are, the, these are the top five that I thought of. Do you have other questions in mind leading up to the meeting that you were thinking about? Yeah, Sally. Uh, one thing that Mike Smith raised with me, uh, maybe it was last year when he, he voted absentee um, or abstained, was um, mailing ballots out to everybody automatically. Do you know what's the current thinking on that? I have not seen any proposed legislation uh, that would automatically mail ballots to everyone without them first uh, issuing an application, uh, submitting an application requesting that ballot. And so the coalition has been um, you know, focused on permitting this as an option, but not automatic uh, ballots. So that's how color, that's how other states do it. Everybody who's a registered voter receives a ballot automatically, and that's how that all elections are held. That has not been what happened in 2020. Uh, that has not been proposed. I'm not seeing any legislation supporting that. Um, so I kind of think of that argument as a red herring. There, there might be reasons that we don't wanna go to an all mail uh, voting system. A lot of folks really like showing up on election day. That's part of our you know, culture, our democratic culture is, is showing up on election day and being proud that we get our you voted sticker. Uh, and so I would not get distracted by that issue. I think that that's one of those issues where you can say, you know, representative, that's that's not an issue here. Um, you know, we just want to provide an opportunity for folks who want to vote by mail to get their ballot by mail. Got it. Thank you. Very helpful. Uh -huh. Wendy, is that your hand? Yes. 